What's up YouTube and welcome to my pickups video for the month of January 2020. Uh, this month I actually did not do a ton of travel as I've been doing the last few months but I did make one short trip to Chicago uh, a little bit earlier in the month and I have a few games that I got on that trip that I'll show uh, but primarily the games I got this month were purchased either locally or uh, eBay and other online sources. Um, I did attend the Missouri Game Con Junior today, uh, February 1st. However, I'm not going to show the stuff I got for that because technically that's the month of February. So you're going to have to wait a month and I'll show you those pickups in next pickups video. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started and I'll show you some stuff I got for Sega Systems first. Uh, the first one of these was a game that I thought I had, but I saw this locally and I figured I'd go ahead and grab it just in case. And it actually turned out I didn't have it um, for the, the Genesis. I had it on Super Nintendo. And that is the uh, Spider-Man, the animated series uh, game complete in the box. This game is in really nice shape, so I decided to go ahead and grab it. I haven't played it yet. It is an acclaimed title, so I can't say I have high hopes for it. Uh, but I figured I might as well just go ahead and get it, since I had it on Super Nintendo, and I can now make the comparison and see how they uh, stack up to each other. Uh, the other game I got for Sega System is one I picked up just recently. This is um, for the Sega CD, and that is Starblade. Uh, this is a early Namco arcade game. Uh, that was an FMV rail shooter, and uh, they figured that would be a good fit to bring it home on the Sega CD. Um, actually, was playing this last night. It holds up pretty good um, overall as far as most of the Sega CD rail shooters, and um, plays very smoothly. There's not a lot of load times. Um, they did uh, crop the screen just a little bit from the arcade version just to make sure that the, the screen still looked good. Uh, but it's pretty decent for Sega CD, and overall it seems like this game is going up in price um, uh, recently, more so than I thought it had, so I was very happy to get it. Um, this also came out on the PS1 as an early long box title, and it's a slightly enhanced version, so it's called Starblade Alpha. Um, I have that one also, but I haven't played that too much, so now I kind of want to play them back-to-back -back and see which one's a little bit better, but very happy to get this for the Se Sega CD collection. Um, if you saw my last video, you know that I recently picked up a Neo Geo CDZ system, and I said then that this is going to be my primary focus for the system I'm looking to pick up games for uh, for the immediate future. So this month was no exception. I actually got four more games for the system that I'm very excited to have. I've um, been playing this system a lot, and uh, especially these four games. So I'll go ahead and show you these. Um, first one of these is Sengoku 2. Um, this is a really bizarre um, beat-em-up set up in like modern Japan with some feudal Japan overtones and time travel involved. Uh, it has some really <laughs> zany visuals in it, um, as did the first game in the series, which I've also played before. There is a third game that uh, didn't get a Neo Geo CD version, but there's a home cart version. I've played that in the arcades, uh, but this whole series is extremely crazy as far as some of the visuals, and the gameplay is very smooth. Um, it also has some character transformation dynamic, uh, where you can play as an alternate character, especially uh, for a limited amount of time, that helps you out in some of the battles. So. Very much enjoying this game. Um, definitely has some cool artwork in it and could recommend it uh, for Neo CD. Another game I got um, for the system is the very first Neo Geo CD ever released. This is um, disc number 001 as it's numbered, and that is for NOM 1975. Um, this, I also believe, was the first game that was released for the uh, home cart system after it came out in the arcade. So very early Neo Geo technology. Um, this game is brutal. Um, I, I can't imagine playing this in an arcade. Um, I played all the way through the game and I probably would have pumped about $30 worth of quarters in it for as many times as I continued uh, because it just gets ridiculously hard in the later stages. Uh, the game is a gallery shooter so it's a lot like uh, Cabal and some of the other similar gallery shooters of the era uh, but it is very very good um, quality and just very frenzied as far as the action. So after all that um, and all my continuing, it actually did me go good because I got the bad ending, <laughs> which resets the game to the start and you don't get another chance at that final boss. Um, so I guess I'm going to have to give it another shot and try to do a little better and uh, hopefully get the good ending. But can highly recommend this one as well. Um, it really stands the test of time. It's a very good quality game, especially for such an early uh, Neo Arcade release. Um, this next one is probably the one I'm the most excited about, about uh, from this whole stack, and that is Cyber Lip. And this is a game that I had never played in the arcade. I really wasn't that familiar with it, but I knew it was one of the more desirable Neo CD titles. And I really understand why now. Uh, this game is incredibly uh, fun run and gun style game. I would almost liken it to like a thinking man's Contra or a thinking man's Metal Slug, in that uh, the bosses are just as huge and creative 
um, but the overall action of the game is a little bit more methodical. It's not as many enemies running at you on the screen at all times, so you can kind of plan out um, how you want to take action, and it's a, a really good pace of the game. I like it. Um, so I've been playing this quite a bit as well. Uh, it is also very difficult. It's actually a longer game uh, compared to most of the Neo CD titles, so I haven't made it all the way through this one, but really like the artwork on it as well. Uh, definitely have to call that out, and uh, definitely am very excited to have that as part of the collection. Um, the last game I got for Neo CD is one of the three top-down uh, racing games, and it's kind of cool that the system has three of those because I've always liked that genre. Um, this one is Rally Chase. This is one of the easier games to find for the system, and it's probably the easiest of those three top-down racers to get. Uh, but it plays very well. Again, it's an earlier um, Neo arcade game. Overall, uh, just nice pace to the game. Um, just some good quality point-to-point -point rally racing. The uh, timing on the game is extremely tight, and there are races where you might win by like one-tenth of a second. It's that close to the clock, so uh, definitely have to uh, pursue it to, to do well in this game. But also enjoying this and hoping to get some more of those top-down racers for the system. Um, I got one other import game this month. This was actually uh, part of that Chicago trip, and I just found this in a store. It's not something I was actively pursuing, but something I always thought would be kind of cool to own. And it's for uh, PC Engine Super CD, and that is Double Dragon 2, um, The Revenge. And so this is an enhanced version of Double Dragon 2 that came out quite a bit later than the other console versions on uh, NES or even the Japanese Mega Drive. And they definitely took a lot of liberties with the gameplay on this. Um, it has cutscenes that were obviously not a part of the original arcade version. Uh, the overall pace of the game, they've even changed that, so it plays at a very different speed than like the NES version. And um, some of the detail in this game, they really did some nice, uh, nice sound effects to it, especially. So I like the that when your character walks down um, a ladder, you can hear the boots uh, sound effect <laughs> hitting the steps. Just little things like that you would never have in like an NES game. Um, so overall decent. It definitely is not the same um, as the NES game, which I've been playing since a childhood. Um, but it is kind of a nice like in between the arcade version and NES version as far as the overall gameplay style. So very happy to have that. Um, so but again, I wasn't necessarily looking for, but enjoying it nevertheless. Uh, another import game I got on that trip to Chicago that happened to be at the same store uh, was another game I was looking for for Saturn, but I found it for PlayStation instead, and that's okay. Uh, that is Capcom Generations 2. So my last month I got Capcom Generations 1, which was all the uh, 1943 series shooters. This is for all the uh, Ghouls and Ghosts and Ghosts and Goblins series games. So you get arcade versions of Ghouls and Ghosts, arcade versions of uh, Ghosts and Goblins, and then you also get... Uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, the Super Famicom version on here as well. So you get three games in the series. Um, plays very well, looks good, colorful. Um, it, what's interesting to me is this PS1 version goes for about a quarter as much as the Saturn version does. So uh, nice to get a budget version, I guess, of this that probably is just as good in the long run. And uh, the other thing I noticed about this is this was released in 1998, which was right when the DualShock came out, and this does actually have uh, rumble support for the DualShock, so they were even thinking about optimizing the PS1 version a little bit. Um, so for the amount that you can get this game for, I would highly recommend getting it. Um, Saturn version, you know, you may want to hesitate because it is a little bit more pricey. Uh, next up is a PS3 game I stumbled on in a uh, bargain bin at a local store. This is um, Captain America Super Soldier. I have not played this yet. I actually think I have this on Wii, but I figured it would be better on PS3. So I'm probably going to sell that version and keep this one and um, hopefully give it a shot here pretty soon. I think that came out around the time of the first movie, so um, it's a little bit older. Um, I did get one game for a Nintendo system this month. This is complete in the box. The box is a little rough, but I also found this on that Chicago trip, and that is uh, King of Fighters 95 for the original Game Boy. And uh, has that uh, new release sticker on it that they put on a few of these um, straight from the factory. I think there was like five or six of these games that had that sticker on it. So kind of cool to have one of the later Game Boy games um, complete in the box. Uh, that does it for all the games I got this month. I'm going to show you a couple other things I picked up over the month gaming related. First one of these is a manual I've been looking for forever. Um, this is for Star Soldier Vanishing Earth on N64. So I've had the box and cartridge for this for probably almost 20 years and just never ever had the manual for this. So now I have a nice complete copy of this game, um, which is actually one of the more difficult uh, games to find complete in the box on N64. 
And I know this game got a lot of trash talk when it first came out, uh, that it was not a worthy um, part of the Star Soldier series. I would disagree with that. I think that graphically it's a little ugly, uh, but as far as gameplay, this is a great shooter and always has been. Um, so I highly recommend that if you ever had any hesitation on uh, getting this game just due to its reputation. I think it's well worth having if you like the Star Soldier games. Um, one other game I got as a uh, upgrade is a complete-in-the-box copy of NARC. Um, I actually thought I needed this, and I got home and I realized I had it, but the box I had was kind of trashed, and this one had, like, the poster and some of the other extras with it. So I'm going to keep this one as a upgraded copy and then sell my other complete copy off. Um, <laughs> this game, I've been playing this since a kid. I always thought it was crazy, um, the amount of things that you do to shoot and capture drug dealers in this game. It's really a crazy uh, element of its time that you could probably not get away with in this day and age, but uh, definitely was a fun arcade game, and I still also like the NES version. One of my friends had that when we were growing up, so we played it pretty often. Um, last thing I got this month is a couple more issues of Game Fan. If you've been watching my videos, you know I'm going for a full set of Game Fan magazines, and this, I think, gets me down to uh, three or four more issues left that I need, so I'm getting very close to having a complete set. Uh, first one of these is, they're, they're both from the uh, very first volume, um, this one is issue 7, so this is uh, pretty early in the run. This one's got uh, Rock and Roll Racing on the cover, which is a pretty decent title. Some pretty cool artwork on it as well, I think. And then the last one is for, um, this is issue 12 of volume 1, so the very last issue. This one is for Super, uh, is it Super Empire Strikes Back? Yeah. Super Empire Strikes Back um, on Super Nintendo, which is not really a game I care for, but uh, definitely a good issue. Um, had a good time reading both of these. There was some great coverage of uh, like Turbo Duo games in these. I love the review that they gave of Camp California on the Turbo Duo. It was basically like, <laughs> I can't believe this exists. And things like uh, Street Fighter 2 are not coming over the United States, yet we get a game like this. So very truthful um, and definitely covered games that you probably wouldn't see in EGM or some of the other magazines at the time. So very happy to get even closer to my complete set of game fans and uh, hopefully be done with that set here in the coming months. So that's about it for the month. Um, like I said, next month I'll show you my Go Missouri Game Con Junior uh, pickups, which I got a few things that were pretty cool today. And uh, thank you for watching. Please take a moment, like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think. I will talk to you soon. Have a great day or night, wherever you are.